Hello and welcome to this Oak Tree English video on the City and Guilds ESOL Speaking and Listening Exam for Entry 2. In this video, I am going to tell you how to pass the ESOL Speaking and Listening Exam. This is especially for the City and Guilds exam, but will be relevant for all ESOL oral exams. The exam is in three parts, which test listening, speaking to communicate, and speaking to converse, that is, to have a two-way conversation or discussion. We will go through each section, how to prepare and how to pass. So, the listening section is a maximum of 15 minutes long. Within that 15 minutes, you will hear a one minute recording and answer four to five questions about it. Those questions will be a mix of multiple choice, multiple answers, gist and detail, where gist means the main idea. You will hear the recording a maximum of three times. When you get your paper, the first thing you should do is analyze the question. Try and work out what the question is asking and what sort of answer you should give. Is it a name, a number, a date, an action? Find the gist question, that is the question about the main meaning. Then you will hear the recording for the first time. This time you should only answer the gist question, which will usually ask about the person speaking or the people they are speaking to. The second time you hear, you should be able to answer all the questions. But don't worry if you can't, because there is a third chance to check your answers. Finally, you are given time to make sure you have written exactly what you want to on your paper. Remember, this is a listening exam, so you are only expected to write a, sh a short answer of a few words. It is not a writing exam. That comes later. Let's look at an example in the public domain from the City and Guilds website. There's two of me. That's exciting. I won't play the audio so your teacher can still make use of the resource. Let's break down what we know about each of these questions. Number one, this is asking you to deal, to listen for a detail, specifically for the name of the person who was speaking. The answer will be Clark Kent or Bruce Wayne or Peter Parker or another name. And that is all you have to write. The second question is asking you for two answers, multiple answers. There are usually three or four possible answers and you only have to write two. In this case, you're being asked for two types or kinds or sorts of accident, such as a slip or trip or giant explosion. Question three is, uh, it begins with how. Therefore, it is asking for a method or a precaution, such as by taking more care or by clearing up spills or not building a nuclear reactor out of cardboard. 
A clear answer will be in the text. Listen for it and don't make up your own, however much you know about the subject. Remember, it is a listening exam. Question four. This one, particularly in this example, is the gist question. The gist question could be any of the numbers. In this case, it is number four. You, so this is the one you will answer in your first listen. Only one of the choices in this multiple choice will be right, although all of them will be mentioned at different times in the recording. And that is all of the questions. Most students find this to be the easiest part of the exam. And if you have understood most of this video, you will do well. The first speaking activity is 15 minutes long, in theory. But this includes about five minutes of speaking and 10 minutes of planning. The task is in two parts. First, you will be asked to give some personal details, such as your name and address, including the postcode, and spell your name. The second part will be to talk about a topic that you have been given. The exam will suggest some things you should talk about. Make sure you speak about everything you are asked for. Let's think about the process of the second part of the exam. The first thing you need to do is to read and understand the question. My old geography teacher used to write on the board, RTQ, read the question. You don't need to know that. Here is an example question. I'm sorry, it is rather small. It will help if you're watching on a computer rather than on a phone. Sorry about that. Um, I'll read it out to you. Activity two. You have up to 15 minutes to do this activity. I just told you that. This activity will be recorded. Yes, I didn't tell you that, but it's true. Introduce yourself. Make sure you spell your full name, give your address and postcode. They're testing that you know the alphabet in English. Tell your tutor about health and safety in the workplace. Make sure you say why health and safety rules are important, how health and safety rules affect you. You're asked to introduce yourself and then talk about why health and safety is important and how health and safety affects you. So make basic notes, just a few words. Don't write a script. That is writing every word you're going to say. You don't have time and it won't give a good result. If you make a mind map or a list of things you could talk about, that will be enough. Then you will be called back to do the exam. At that point, take a deep breath in, hold it, and then breathe out. Once the exam, uh, nerves are not your friend in this exam. Once in the exam, you will be asked to give your personal details including spelling your name. Make sure you can do that. Then you'll be asked to talk for a few minutes about the subject of your exam. If you have planned properly, this should not be a problem. The second part of the speaking exam, called Activity 3, that's helpful, is also 15 minutes in theory. 
In practice, your 10 minute planning phase will take place at the same time as your speaking to communicate planning stage. So you will have 20 minutes to prepare both sections and then approximately 10 minutes of speaking. Please, please, please don't forget to plan. That is the most common way people fail this exam. You will have a six minute discussion, usually with your tutor, although other candidates can be in the room. You will be expected to ask two questions as well as give your own point of view. That's what makes it a discussion. You must also cover all the points you are asked to speak about. Would you like to see a question? Of course you would. The question will look like this. Ping. I can't afford good sound effects. I have to make them myself. Um, notice if you are feeling sorry for me now, just get lots of people to subscribe to my channel. Eventually I will be able to afford sound effects. The question will look like this. Notice there are two parts tell and ask. Don't do that in England. Tell and ask. You are marked on both of these. So you must, 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 must make notes. Again, just a few words to keep you on track. You still don't have time for a script. Include in your notes what you will say and what you will ask. If you get stuck and aren't sure what to write in your plan, go back to thinking about your question words. Why, when, where, what and who? If you answer all those, you can ask your interlocutor, that is the person you are speaking to, what their experience or opinion is. If you work and study hard, you should be able to pass this exam. If for any reason you don't, then there will be another chance later in the year. So don't cry about it. I wish you very good luck and good planning. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please remember to like, share and subscribe to Oak Tree English.